This is 6th grade, Engage New York, Module 1, Lesson 1. You will need the classwork papers to go along with this video. Lesson 1 is about ratios. There are a few rules that you need to know about ratios before you can move on through this assignment. The first thing you need to know about ratios is that they are an ordered pair. They're in a specific order. The order cannot be changed. The second rule that you need to know about ratios is that there cannot be any negative numbers. No negative numbers. All of the numbers must be positive. And lastly, both numbers cannot be zero. It's okay if one of the numbers is zero, but both numbers in a ratio cannot be zero. Those are the only three rules for ratios. Now, as you are reading your classwork, example number one says the co-ed soccer team has four times as many boys as it has girls. We say the ratio of number, to boy, of number of boys to the number of girls on this soccer team is four to one. And it's read four to one. It could also be written four to one. Now, a co-ed soccer team, you may or may not know what that is, Co-ed simply means it has boys and girls on it. Some sports teams allow boys and girls to play on the same team. Others have teams for boys and then a separate team for girls. Co-ed means boys and girls are playing together. To find out more about this soccer team in the ratio of four to one, we're going to make a ratio table. Ratio table is a new vocabulary word new to sixth grade and it will look like this. Draw one on your paper to match what I have. Now the ratio of players is four boys to one girl. So if there are four boys on the team there is one girl. If there are four boys and one girl, the total number of players is five. Five players is not enough to have a soccer team. Most soccer teams need at least 11 players on the field. So we need to get more players on this team, but keep the ratio of boys to girls at four to one. So for every four boys that are on the team, there is one girl. So let's say there's one more girl on the team. To keep the ratio four to one, there would also have to be four more boys on the team. For every one, for every four boys, there is one girl. That would bring the total number of boys to eight boys and two girls. Now, if there are eight boys and two girls on the team, that's a total of 10 players. Still not enough for a soccer team. So we need to add more players. So we can add four more boys. And if we add four boys, we have to add one so if the ratio is for every four boys, there is one girl. So now we have four, eight, 12 boys on the soccer team and one, two, three girls for a total of 15 players. Now, as you're looking at the ratio table, I want you to notice the patterns. Notice the patterns as they move down in the columns. Hopefully you've noticed that each number increases by four and this increases by 1 and 5. So you can continue this table by making equivalent fractions. Now, not all co-ed soccer teams have a ratio of 4 to 1. Let's consider another soccer team, and its ratio is boys to girls is 3 to 2. Now, if that were the case, we could make a ratio table for it, number of boys, number of girls, and then total players. OK, 
Okay, in keeping with the ratio of three to two, if there are three boy players on the team, there must also be two girls. Three boys plus two girls is a total of five players. That is not enough players for a soccer team, so we need to add more players. But keep the ratio boys to girls three to two. We add more players. If we add three more boys to the soccer team and two more girls, our ratio would be six to four and ten players. Going up by three, going up by two, going up by five. And we would just repeat that pattern. Go up by three would be nine, going up by two would be six, going up by five would be fifteen. You can see that keeps with the three to two pattern and going. And nine plus six is 15 players. The rest of the class work on lesson one has to do with the amount of people in the room. So it would be impossible for you to do that outside of a classroom setting. So you would just need to put N-A or not applicable. For the lesson one homework, there are only three problems, but I caution you to be very careful because although there are only three problems, each problem has multiple answers. So number one on the lesson one homework, says at the sixth grade school dance, there's 132 boys, 89 girls, and 14 adults. So we could write that, 132 boys, 89 girls, and 14 adults. And this is for problem number one on the homework. Now, it wants you to use this information to create ratios for A, B, C, and D. Each of them are asking you to write a different ratio using this information. One thing I do want to remind you is that there are two forms to write a ratio. You can write it using a colon or using the word two. In the forms, the, orders, the numbers stay in the same order. The numbers do not change, only what separates the numbers. You'll need to know that to answer the questions on the homework. Be sure to read it carefully, and good luck.